Hello, it is me, it is Catherine. I am back with a very different video because I do have some big news to share with you all. Something I've been dealing with over the past three months, um, which is a health scare that started back in January. And I'm just now coming to terms with it and I'm ready to speak on it and share it with you all. The last thing I wanna do is put more doom and gloom into your lives during this period of a lot of overwhelming feelings, but um, it just so happens that timing of once I'm ready to talk about this has coincided with our global issue. I will say when I got this diagnosis, the first thing I did was come to YouTube and watch other videos of people going through the exact same thing as me. There's nothing more validating and comforting than having someone speak to exactly what you're going through, and I hope that I can provide that with this video. Basically, I don't know if, if you guys remember this, but back in January, I posted an Instagram story basically saying that I had a very scary doctor's appointment and that I wanted all the support and well wishes I could get after that. And this all kind of accumulates over the past two years, but the real tipping point of me finding out about this diagnosis and about my autoimmune disease was in my general physical this year in January. And I think usually I get my general physicals in October, but this year I pushed it off a little bit because I would moved to San Francisco and needed to find a new doctor. Um, so I chose a new doctor and finally set up my annual physical. And because it was a new doctor, it had me fill out a form with like my background and my medical history and my current issues and questions I had for her. So I started to input some of the things I've been feeling over the past year, most notably, I've been dealing with insomnia and a lot of trouble falling asleep, which kind of comes and goes in my life, but it's back. Thinning hair was one. I felt like my part line was just starting to see more of the scalp of my head. And I want to make sure I'm on track to do whatever I can to, you know, not go bald. And then lastly, I'd been feeling really lightheaded in workout classes, especially if they were heated. At least one time during the class, I would start to see spots, start to, you know, my vision goes black. I would have to either sit down on the yoga mat or leave the class, leave the heat, and just get some air and rest and relax. And sometimes if I went back in, the same thing would happen multiple times. And it sounds kind of scary, but it wasn't that scary to me because I'd been taking spironolactone uh, beginning January of 2019. I talked about it in my acne video, but it is a really, really common medication that a lot of women take to clear up hormonal acne because it is a testosterone blocker. It also, though, originally was made to lower people's high blood pressure, and I have normal blood pressure, so it really dropped my blood pressure and I felt the same lightheaded symptoms the entire time I was taking that medication, but I stopped taking it in August, like completely stopped taking it, not even a single pill, and then in January of 2020, I was still feeling those symptoms. And I thought it was because I was out of shape, but it never really changed no matter how much I exercised. So I came in with those three and my doctor was so, so nice in the appointment and just started with those three symptoms. I walked her through it and then she had some follow-up questions. So she was asking if I'd been a lot more thirsty than usual and I said, well, I've been drinking a lot more water and been, you know, better at drinking water lately, so I think my body's, you know, been more thirsty because it's now used to drinking a lot more water, if that makes sense. So it's like double-edged sword there. So I said yes somewhat and asked uh, if I'd lost my period and I said yes because the same thing happened with spironolactone, which is a normal effect of it, uh, but it continued after I stopped taking it. But I also do have an IUD, so it's not abnormal to lose your period on that. She asked if I'd been experiencing a really fast heart rate. I said no. She asked if I'd been losing a lot more hair and I said yes. She asked if I'd been running hot and really sensitive to heat and I said that is actually a symptom I forgot to write down but over the past like two years I think my hormones have just been changing because I run so hot now in a way that I never did before. Like everyone else in the group could be cold and I could be perfectly fine and I will like just be excessively hot and have to like take off layers. And so she was like, okay, let's definitely take your blood pressure. And my blood pressure came back completely normal, like 119 over 82, which is super normal. But when she took my heart rate, she said my heart rate was 106 
bees per minute, which I'm no medical professional, but the normal, you know, resting heart rate for an unathletic person like myself is 60. So 106, I was so shocked and just surprised. I had no idea that my heart rate was that fast and I thought maybe it's because I'm nervous in this doctor's appointment. Um, so then she started asking me if I noticed, you know, my neck starting to, you know, get swollen or hot. I told her I never really check up on my neck because who does? It's not really an area of my body I'm, you know, making sure to check up on. But once she actually felt it, she said, oh my God, yeah, you're like, you're extremely swollen in your thyroid and very, very warm. And she asked if my eyes had been protruding more than normal, which I had to ask her a clarifying question on what that meant. But she basically said, if you've been seeing more of the whites of your eyes than normal, and not even two days before this appointment, I was editing a video that I filmed in this exact spot and I had to scrap all the footage because the entire video, all I was doing is widening my eyes like this. And I am a very expressive person, but it was pissing me off the extent to which I did that. And I have gotten a few hate comments about that before. So I refilmed it. So I had noticed that, which I was like, that's such a random thing to ask about. And then her last question was if I would lost a lot of weight recently, which was the one symptom I had not been experiencing kind of unfortunately but also it is what it is and I was just so confused because I'd never been asked those questions in a doctor's appointment before I didn't know why all those things were necessary for three normal symptoms but what came out of her mouth was that she suspected I had a thyroid disorder or an overactive thyroid that's completely out of whack because all those things are you know controlled by your thyroid gland which i had no idea i had no idea any of those things were connected period much less all driven by the thyroid and i started to get i started to get pretty nervous um and then she dropped that you know hyperthyroidism is what she's you know pretty sure that i have and that it's an autoimmune disease and the words autoimmune disease to me are very very serious like I've never even had anything related to this before. No one in my family does. It's completely out of the blue. And I was starting to get pretty freaked out. And immediately the first question I had was, is this, you know, reversible? And she said, no, like it, it's not reversible. There's no cure. You're gonna have it for the rest of your life. And my heart sank. I could not believe that I went in for my routine physical. And 15 minutes later I had a pretty sure diagnosis that I had an autoimmune disease that would never go away and I would live with it every single day for the rest of my life and I just started to spiral I just couldn't believe what she was saying and and the fact that she was so sure I couldn't believe I just wanted to believe that this was a mistake and that all these things were just flukes and that the results would show up a different way and she said they could show up a different way but you know her expectation was that I had a thyroid problem and she said, we need to get you into blood testing and we need to get you into an ultrasound to confirm. And so I left the appointment, absolutely cried on the public bus, which I have no shame in doing, and got home and cried and immediately just Googled hyperthyroidism and the symptoms that pop up were crazy because of how accurate they were to every single little tiny thing that I wouldn't even tell anybody that I was experiencing. So like, if you just Google, the common signs include nervousness, anxiety, or crankiness, which over the past few months, I cannot tell you how anxious I've been even before, you know, this whole pandemic epidemic has started. Fatigue or weakness, which I thought it was just because I was working a lot more hours at work than normal. We kind of like had this reorg and I was just so much busier at work. I had been so lethargic. Sensitivity to heat, absolutely. Swollen thyroid, absolutely. You probably can't see it that much or maybe you can on this angle. That's not it. This is it right here. It's very, very swollen on me. But I had no idea what a normal thyroid gland even looks like. Losing weight suddenly without trying. I got screwed on that symptom. But fast or an even heartbeat that night before I went to bed, my resting heart rate at like 10 p.m. before I went to bed was still 
102 99 beats per minute so insane having more bowel movements i thought that was just because i'm vegetarian not to be gross but like shaking in your hands and fingers when i read this i stopped because in september when i went to europe with Anne marie i was filming every single day of that trip and i was holding my tiny vlog camera not even very heavy and i was getting pissed at myself because i could not hold it steady like usually i can do a nice little you know glide over super easily but my hands would not stop shaking and i just could not figure it out so i kind of ignored it but that was something that i didn't really tell anybody about but i had been experiencing sleep problems thinning hair fine brittle hair and then changes in menstrual cycle like i said so i kind of sat there you know it was hard for me to deny that this is what i had based on those symptoms and i was kind of just putting all my eggs in this basket of hyperthyroidism and immediately I went to YouTube and I was watching so many videos of other a lot of women most famously Wendy Williams has hyperthyroidism or Graves disease and not all people with hyperthyroidism have Graves disease but everyone with Graves disease has hyperthyroidism it's kind of like bugs and insects all bugs are insects but not all insects are bugs that kind of thing and based on this eye thing that I had no idea was as bad as it was, but my doctor had noticed the first time she met me, I was looking into Graves' disease and was pretty convinced I had it because this eye situation, like if I'm relaxing comfortably, this is how I want to, you know, open my eyes like this. Like this to me feels normally open. And so guys, every single second of every single day, all I've been thinking about is close your eyes, Catherine, keep them a little bit more shut. You don't want to look like a crazy person, have crazy bug eyes, have dead eyes. And over the past few months, I've gotten a lot of comments like, are you super shocked, scared? Are you surprised? You know, I see this wide eyed stare from Catherine, like all these comments. And I was just convinced I had Graves disease. And you look at Wendy Williams, she's obviously extremely rich, has all the money in the world, but still could not control this eye symptom. So I was starting to get pretty devastated. I think devastated is the word to use that unbeknownst to me, I had this life altering diagnosis. It wasn't a diagnosis yet. I had to get a bunch of tests done, but I was gonna have this thing the rest of my life without, without fail. Like there was no way to change that. I asked my doctor like what the triggers were, what caused it, what did I do to deserve this? And basically she said, you could have just gotten a cold, you know, a virus, a flu last year and your antibodies just got out of whack during that illness and started to attack your thyroid and just triggered this whole mess. So I was like, great, so there's not even a reason for this. I just was an unlucky person. I don't even get sick that much. And somehow I screwed myself over and now have a permanent autoimmune disease. You just wake up one day and your whole life changes and I'm not trying to be dramatic and blows out of proportion. I know that. I know that I'm still an able-bodied person with a lot of privilege, but I'm just speaking from the heart. It felt like weight dropped on me. And so I got the blood work done and the results confirmed that, you know, my thyroid activity was way higher than it should be, like astronomically higher. But even scarier than the results of the blood test was that the claim the bill from the blood work i did at my hospital at my medical center was 336 dollars for a simple blood test that took three minutes and i was like complete i was an i was actually mad i was actually angry seeing that um and i asked if they hadn't applied my insurance yet and they said yes that's the out-of-pocket cost for blood work and i just once i saw that i more more than just the disorder and the diagnosis i started to get freaked out that i was about to have a huge financial weight dropped on me and i was right because the ultrasound referral that she gave me i called the hospital got a quote and they quoted me seven hundred dollars to get a 20 minute ultrasound at that point i got very anxious frustrated mad irritated everything at once because I couldn't believe that I was the unlucky one who developed this disease out of nowhere and I had to burden all this cost for necessary tests that I had to get done like can I get a hell yeah for universal healthcare because this process has taught me more than I've ever known before how goddamn broken our system is like 
for any of you out there that are dealing with similar health issues and you're in America, I'm so sorry. Like, it's my first time dealing with it and I'm so lucky to not have dealt with this for 24 years. I was in a state of disbelief and, and so I can't tell you how much time I've spent over the past three months, like, Googling different providers, you know, private providers for ultrasounds, calling Aetna during their business hours before work's over, but they close at five and like calling them, waiting on the line. It would always take 30 minutes just to get connected with somebody on the line. And then I would walk through individually, try to get pricing from them for each clinic. Most of the times the people on the phone did not want to help me. There was one glorious guy that helped me figure it out. And basically we spent like 45 minutes on the phone, just running through every single place and he would pull up the system and see how much it would cost previous Aetna patients to go there. And eventually I finally found a place that was consistently only $135 out of pocket. But to me, like $135 for a lot, like for a necessary medical procedure is still outrageous. And what was even more horrifying was thinking about for the people that don't have insurance, that same procedure without insurance costing $3,000 thousand dollars for an ultrasound like I, w I was just unwell this was a really dark period of time in which I was calling all these places luckily I was in therapy at the same time my therapist really helped rationalize everything for me and you know comfort me and validate me and so she helped me a lot process a lot of it but finally I got an appointment my mom went with me it truly took 20 minutes and I went to do another round of blood tests, so another $336, which is insane for a goddamn blood test, okay? That takes five seconds. And lo and behold, the ultrasound came back that there was a mass in my neck that, you know, was somewhat solid, somewhat not, and there was a risk for cancer. So I was like, here I am with my autoimmune disease diagnosis, already struggling with that and now there's a chance I have cancer and I just did not want to deal with it because I would have to get a biopsy and I just I just had a feeling that that would be insanely expensive but luckily I have very loving parents and once I told them they said if I needed their help let them know and like I could always pay them back later and have them help me afford some of this stuff so uh, basically the most recent step of this process was going to an otolaryngologist or an ENT and I went to about two weeks ago to meet with him and get the biopsy and figure out, you know, if this was cancer, what was going on. Luckily, the appointment went so well. He was extremely competent, so good at his job, so friendly, so kind and reassured me on everything and also basically said that this lump was actually just cartilage and that I would just need to get a MRI <laughs> to figure out that. So I need to get an MRI. I can't get it right now because most of the doctor's offices are you know, recommending I don't come in because there's risk to catch corona there and that they don't have a lot of capacity. But when I walked out of that appointment, my doctor told me if you feel lightheaded, like you're gonna faint, or if you feel heart palpitations, you need to go to the emergency room immediately. And that put the fear of God in me because I had never thought any of these very mild symptoms, not even symptoms, just things happening to me. I didn't think of them as symptoms are like life threatening. I'm not saying I have a terminal illness. I'm not saying I will die from my hyperthyroidism, from my Graves disease, but it is it was, it was much more serious than I'd ever deemed it to be. This was actually the second time that I've dealt with a health scare. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I have scoliosis and I've had that since I was 12 years old. And for a lot of people, it doesn't bother them. It's something to laugh about, but, and it was for me for a while, but basically when I was 12 or 13, the curvature of my spine was, was about 13 degrees, which is very minimal, super manageable, um, not anything to be scared about. And so I was very diligent. My mom was very diligent and paid for the chiropractic care I needed. I went into the chiropractor three times a week, two hours a session, so six hours a week, every week of sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth, and tenth grade. It was like a hobby, it was like an extracurricular because I spent so much time on it. I got to tenth grade and I stopped growing and we retested me and re we re x-rayed my spine and my curvature was only like 14 or 15 degrees, which is very, very good progress because it basically did not progress at all in that time and we had stabilized it. 
And so at that point I was done growing and I, my chiropractor said, you know, once you're done growing, you can stop coming in because your spine's not gonna, you know, grow anymore, change anymore. But like junior year of college, you know, five years after I stopped going in, I was the same height. I've been 5'10 for the entire time since 10th grade. And I went to see the chiropractor because my back had been really tight, really sore. And she x-rayed me and the curvature in my spine. I got back was 45 degrees. Immediately I wanted to believe that she had made a mistake, that she had done it wrong, that she had calculated it wrong, but like the proof was there on paper and just seeing the x-ray of your own spine looking so fucked up is, it's so disturbing to see that you look like that and like even just your own image of yourself, like you probably can't tell or maybe some of you can, but I can tell, I can tell in my body, I can tell when I put on clothes, like I can tell with how I feel, how I have to sit, how I, how uneven, how my hip pops out, how my back is, it just, it doesn't sound that bad, but I promise you like in my own personal experience, it has been very disturbing to think about how bad my back is. And so basically the advice I had been told was wrong. My back obviously tripled and quadrupled the curvature in five years and it will continue to do so for the rest of my life because it's not stabilized and your spine will do what it wants to do and even if i brace it your spine most of the time when girls brace their spines it still gets worse so in college i'd gone through a health scare where i was seeing all these specialists and worrying about it every day and just just the thought that, that every year of my life my spine's gonna get one to two degrees worse and that by like 80 i'm gonna be completely not debilitated, but completely changed. Thinking about the deterioration of my health over the next 20, 30 years, and also thinking about the amount of financial burden I'm gonna have to shell out this year. Like, I just can't even think of how astronomical these surgeries can get because, you know, I've seen some tweets about, you know, people staying in the hospital for two or three days and they have insurance and the bill ends up being $100,000 and like, I have not come to terms with my diagnosis. I have not come to terms with the treatment yet. I don't know which option I'm going to do yet. I am so scared of those. And the fact that even once you do those treatments, I'll still be on medication the rest of my life, but it's a medication that will treat lack of thyroid and basically supplement my thyroid. And that will be less detrimental to my internal organs. But it does mean, but it does mean that it takes years and years to stabilize the amount of thyroid hormone that I need and so there's gonna be a lot of fluctuation with my weight and now my eyes and my fatigue levels and like it's something that affects me daily the past few months I've just been feeling like I have never felt like this in my entire life that I might have depression because I'm just so irritable I want to yell at everyone you know I don't want to do anything you know I don't want to work any more than I have to. I don't want to like even talk to my roommates. I don't want to cook. I just want to sit there, do nothing. I don't want to go out on the weekends. Like I just have been feeling so off, lost, just completely, just completely a different person. And it's been really shitty to say the least, but this fatigue is something that my therapist said, this is not clinical depression, depression at all. It is just this fatigue that's causing me to feel depressed and anxious. Just my energy levels are gonna be so much lower than I'm used to and a big part of my identity is how high energy and how positive I am. So, so to now beyond my control have a completely different energy level and like, you know, immune system, like my whole, like everything about me, like it's not just like one, you know, one area. It's not just like my energy levels. It's also like my sleep system and my breathing and like, like hands tremoring. Like it's all just connected. Um, so it does feel very all encompassing, but I want to believe that's not my fault. But then parts of me are like, you know, people do say like, oh, it's how you eat that, you know, caused this, which is definitely hits close to home because I don't eat great. And I know that about myself. And I do have problems with binge eating. And I wish I could just wake up one day and have it all disappear, but it's something that I need to take care of and be proactive about. And I don't want this to be like a pity me. Like I know that I'm very lucky to have what is good health insurance. I know I'm lucky to live in a place with access to healthcare. I have a very supportive family um, that is able to support me financially if I need that. And that it's not a terminal illness. 
I will be able to live with this. So many people live with it. It's a very, very common thing to have. I'm not alone. I'm not special. Like so many people have this. It's just having a diagnosis come from nowhere is so scary. And that's where I relate to this crisis. I know how, how it is to feel afraid for your health and live in fear. And it's a horrible feeling. So if I can comfort you all and just say, I'm getting through this and you will get through this. We will all get through this. We're all dealing with our own personal crisis and dealing with overwhelming feelings. So I'm doing the best that I can every single day. I am not immunocompromised, so I'm not high risk for COVID-19. But there are so many people with autoimmune diseases that are. And the one piece of solace is the more I'm open about this, the more people in my life come forward and say that they also have an autoimmune disease or a thyroid condition and that they're, you know, living with it and that they're okay. But they all say it's a very long, long process to get it all figured out. And definitely an expensive process too. So I'm kind of kicking myself for not catching it earlier and not like, you know, preventing a lot of the eye symptoms of Graves' disease earlier, which, and even just the name is like, God, at least I have the solace of knowing what it is and what thousands of people have done to treat it. And I wanna just thank you in advance for your support here. Thank you for all the support you've already given me without even knowing what I was going through. Um, it's been a lot. I appreciate you all more than you know. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all next time with a very different video. And Catherine out.